There is no greater representation of opportunity than a big rocket fueled and ready on the pad. We, those of us in the space construction industry, should be ready for that moment. We should have a large collection of space construction tools and machines tested and ready for launch to an off-world construction site when that day comes. But when Starship is certified for launching satellites and more, we're not going to be ready. We are behind, but we intend to change that. In this video, I will reveal to you each step of our business plan of how we plan to get from where we are now to building large modules, big spacecraft, and Vera Station. Next, our plan to reduce the price for vacations to space hotels down to suborbital prices. And last, how everyday people are going to have careers in space and how some people are going to go up and choose to never come down again. My name is John Blinko. I am president of Gateway Spaceport and CEO of Offworld Industries Corporation. Some people look at a space station like this and they say, wow, it's going to cost $500 billion or a trillion dollars to build. Some people look at a space construction machine like Sargon and they will say it'll take 20 years to develop that. Well, they're wrong, and not just by a little bit, but by a lot. This machine that we call the Sargon Construction Ring is designed to build Vera Station very fast and very affordably. That is why some of you are going to visit the station before the end of the decade, and you won't spend $50 million to go not even one-tenth of that price. How do I know? Because of this. Starship and Super Heavy. They will make space stations like Vera affordable, and they will allow them to be created very fast. Those savings will be passed on to you to help create a human space economy that is robust and ascendant. This is the Sargon construction ring. With this machine, we can make hundreds of big stations and orbital rings around this world, and we can make them fast. We could have five of these stations operating in 10 years. This century will be the one where humankind becomes an off-world species, where humans colonize other planets, moons, and build large-scale habitats in orbit around them. We call the stage of human history, Ascension. Humankind will build the ships and stations to colonize our solar system because we can. The greatest adventure that humankind will ever experience is at our doorstep, but it's not going to come to us. We have to go out and build it. We need to build the spaceships, starships, spaceports, and off-world colonies everywhere we can. People you know are going to be working in space. People from all over the world, and not just a few, thousands. It all begins with Starship, Vera Station, and you. Ascension starts now. It can be years to wait for module development here on Earth, most likely one at a time, and lots of money goes to outside companies jacking up the price. With Sargon Systems, we learn how to manufacture the 16 unique panels that comprise one panel ring for Vera Station. Then we repeat that process hundreds of times. It's even easier to make modules and spacecraft with Sargon. You create only one type of panel, then make hundreds of those. That is an essential part of our business plan. Our plan starts with showing our investors that we can do the hardest parts first. For this, we will build a low-cost demonstrator that moves panels into place, then welds them together. It's not the welding that we're testing that is straightforward. It is the proper positioning of the panels using the panel cart. We want to get this done before Christmas. This is the only stage of Sargon Systems development that will not offer any ROI, return on investment. Next, we will create a flight prototype that will build a test module on orbit. This will be a 6 by 10 meter long module. After we assemble it, we will pressurize the interior. Once pressurized, astronauts can build out the interior to suit their needs. Once operational, we will use it to build bigger modules, and then we will enlarge the 6 meter Sargon construction ring to 8 meters so it will make elevator shafts for Vera Station. The 14 meter Sargon construction ring that will build the Virgo modules and the STVs will be almost identical to the 6 meter Sargon unit that will build the first test module. Both systems will have one size panels and uniform magazines that are simple to make and maintain. Such large modules will lower the price of zero-g lab space for off-world manufacturers and space tourists until Vera Station's inner torus is ready.
We intend for these big 14 meter modules to become the new standard in off-world production and zero-g science. The International Space Station is limited in the number of partners it can have because it has size constraints built in by the craft that would visit it. Having Starship visit the ISS looks very lopsided because it can offer so much more than the ISS can handle. A new habitation standard is needed. Virgo module is the basis for that new standard. Now imagine a four module station built using Virgo class modules. Let me set the stage for you. Destiny module in ISS offers 104 cubic meters of volume. All of ISS offers 915 cubic meters of volume. Each Virgo module built by Offworld Industries will offer over 4,000 cubic meters of volume. Four of those together will give you more than 16,000 cubic meters of volume. This means a lot of serious science and production can occur here. Also, a much larger volume means many more international partners can be invited at reasonable prices. Now you have a station that is well-sized to pair with Starship on a weekly or monthly service contract. We call this four Virgo module configuration ZG station. Connecting four Virgo modules together will form a huge station that could be the next evolutionary step for off-world production in a zero-G environment. But there's a better way. Sargon Systems can build a module of almost any size and length. Instead of building a four module complex that will need eight end caps, we can create a single module that is four times longer using only two end caps. This is what a module created by a continuous volume generator would look like. We call this long tubular station design the station module. An entire massive zero-g station all in one module. Sargon Systems could build it fast and affordably. This means that we have two station formats to follow. A collection of Virgo modules or a single station module. It all depends on how much privacy our clients require. Vera Station's Inner Taurus is a big rotating space station all on its own. Although it is only 84 meters in diameter, the Inner Taurus offers an astounding 85,278 cubic meters of volume. This little Taurus is the perfect first step before building the big Outer Taurus. The Inner Taurus, with the operational hub, may run for a year generating revenue and validating systems operations before we are ready to build the big Outer Taurus. Building the inner torus and the hub are the revenue key for finishing Vera Station's outer torus. So what are the first steps to build Vera Station? Number one, build the ground demonstrator. Number two, build the test module in space. Number three, build a 14 meter Sargon construction ring creating the first STV and Virgo module. Number four, build Valhalla Station or Super ZG Station, each offering 16,000 cubic meters of volume. And last, build Vera Station's Inner Taurus and Hub, also known as Vera IT Station. These are the steps that precede the full construction of Vera Station. What are the estimated material costs for Vera Station's Inner Taurus? $140.97 million, that's using aluminum 2219-TA for the hole and aluminum 5083 for the floor panels. What are the total estimated number of Starship launches for the hub and inner torus materials? 25 launches. How many to launch the 24 meter Sargon construction ring and ACAD module? That's where the construction crew will live while they're working. Two launches. How many for Vera Station IT's interior components, non-structural? That's stoves for the kitchen, beds and toilets for the rooms, three launches. Total launches for the rotating inner torus with hub. That's all of Vera Station IT, 30 launches. So what are the launch costs? If it's $10 million per launch, then it'll be $300 million. If it's $20 million per launch, it'll be $600 million. And if it's $40 million per launch, $1.2 billion. Launch costs used to be the biggest cost for anything in space. Not anymore. So where are the big expenditures? Engineering. Total estimated engineering costs for Vera IT, between 2.5 and $3.2 billion. Total cost estimates for Vera Station Inner Taurus, everything together, that's four to $5.5 billion. The cost projections for Vera Station's Outer Taurus will be much more accurate after we build the inner torus. 
but we expect to build the outer torus and the elevators for around $2 billion. These inner torus projections will also become more defined after we build the Virgo module and the Valhalla station module using the smaller 14 meter Sargon construction ring. $10 billion is a cost estimate at the end of a line of development steps that include construction assets needed to build a station like this and others like it. But even if we have cost overruns and project delays that double or triple the price, we still will generate enough revenue to pay for this entire station in its first operational year. But what if the revenue is half of what we projected? We still come out ahead. The last 10 years has been all about rockets. Rocket design, rocket fabrication and testing, new rocket companies. There are now more than five major rocket companies just in America alone and more outside of the United States. Access to space has never been cheaper and it's going to become even more affordable if the market for space access does not implode. How could that happen? If they were all to pursue satellite contracts, then the bubble would burst. There are just not enough satellites needing launch services to support all these rocket companies with Starship coming online. But the bubble is not going to burst. The reason is because of you. The coming decade is all about habitation, how it will be made faster, how it will be made bigger, how it will be made cheaper, and how all of that will affect you, the person who wants to go into space. You are the most important part. Space goes from being something interesting to something personal something we will all experience firsthand. The market can support five big rocket companies and more if we can get you into the picture. You're the key. Silicon Valley has generated more wealth than any other place on earth in history. How? A combination of factors came together to produce the opportunity for people to create disruptive technologies. The Sargon construction ring is the disruptive tech that will change the landscape of space habitation forever. Peter Thiel's book tells us how he invested in SpaceX before anyone else because he saw SpaceX as a major disruptor in a stagnant but very profitable launch industry. Eric Schmidt describes in his book that new disruptive technology can be a platform from which a business can expand from. All of the best investors seek this kind of investment because when it is successful, they can dominate a new or existing industry for years, sometimes decades. Some of these companies become trillion dollar corporations and their investors become very wealthy. So what kind of investors are we looking for? The kind who invest in space. That includes SpaceX investors. Starship is so big, it could launch every satellite last year in a month. But a construction contract with off-world industries would see 60 to 70 launches, and that's the small one. The yearly service contract for Vera Station alone is a launch every day for 345 days a year. What better way to protect your investment SpaceX than to invest in a company that will need a huge launch contract? Disruptive technology is rare. But let's have a look at a few famous disruptors. The SR-71 was a jet with huge afterburning engines that could cruise at Mach 3.2 for up to 90 minutes. This amazing jet was developed using rapid prototyping by Kelly Johnson. For years, the Russians had nothing that could catch it. The Boeing 747 was another disruptor. This big jumbo jet dropped the price of international travel to a level that middle class people could afford and the world got smaller. It also helped a lot that the interior was much more voluminous than anything before. A more recent disruptor was the iPhone. Once released, the iPhone dominated the market and competitors either vanished or replicated its features. More recently and more relevant is Starship. This will be the first rocket that allows us to build large stations off-world, the first to do that affordably. Starship will also build big stations on the Moon and Mars, but going to the Moon and Mars will take 10 Starship launches to fuel one Starship going there. That means Starship trips to low Earth orbit will be far more affordable for the near future. That brings us to Vera Station. Space stations up until this point have been small, expensive, and not made for tourists. In the near future, big stations will be built for tourists, and their comfort level will go up as their prices come down dramatically. It's time we have a major disruptor in space habitation. It costs $55 million to visit ISS, which is a laboratory, 
The industry is long overdue for a new opportunity. Vera Station is that disruptor. So what are we charging to visit our station? Vera Station is focusing on a three-tier pricing structure. $2 million for a three-day stay in our nebulous suite, $1 million for the Double Star Deluxe Room, and $500,000 for the Odyssey Room. Yes, you heard that right, $500,000 for a three-day trip to an off-world station. All fees are per person based on double occupancy. How can we do it for such an affordable price? Size matters, and Vera Station is big. The best way to beat the competition is to deliver more to your customer and to do it for half the price. In our case, we will do it for less than one-tenth of the price. But clearly, the big disruptive feature that Veristation will offer our guests is an orbital experience for a suborbital price. Many companies are creating small stations as a filler for when the ISS goes down in 2028. These plans do not include you, unless you're a billionaire or an elite astronaut. Only a few people can visit a station like this at a time, and the experience would be very limited compared to a visit at Vera Station. Let's have a look at the space construction launches. 29 Starship launches for the inner torus and the hub. Each materials tree can handle 24 bundles, that's 240 panels, at 687 kilograms per panel, or 165 metric tons. But the Starship launch limit will be 150 metric tons for now. That may change. So an additional 43 launches for the outer torus and the elevator shafts. The batteries to build the outer torus will be charged using the inner torus solar power generation system. So after the inner torus is built, they will not need to come down for charge, they will be charged off world. Total launches for all of Vera Station, 72, using the current Starship fairing constraints. The Boeing 747 that I used to fly could hold over 424 people in a three-class configuration. First, business and economy. It could also hold over 500 people in a two-class layout. The 747 had plenty of room for all those people and their luggage and cargo. This amazing jet could transport all these people for 15 hours across the Pacific in comfort. The 747 main deck had 610 cubic meters. The lower deck, 130 cubic meters. 747 total volume was 740 cubic meters. Starship volume is 1,000 cubic meters. This rocket will become the 747 of the off-world space lines. It can easily carry 300 citizen astronauts, their luggage, their cargo, and a large contingent of station consumables like food, fresh water, and more. Flight time to Vera Station is only around 8 to 10 hours depending on orbital positioning. Our first product will be the Virgo module. This module design is the basis of our STV, the Station Transfer Vehicle, which is essential to the operation of Vera Station. Virgo module can accommodate between 40 and 60 people in comfort. A collection of four Virgo modules as a station can handle between 160 and 200 guests. The Valhalla Station module will offer the same internal dimensions or more. With STVs and Virgo modules built, we could then build the Vera Station Inner Taurus. This smaller rotating station could accommodate 300 people every three days for 345 days a year. That's 35,000 visitors every year. Once Vera Station's Inner Taurus was built, we would build the Outer Taurus to complete Vera Station. Vera Station can accommodate 300 guests every day for 345 days a year. That's over 103,000 guests every year. With 300 people arriving each day for 345 days a year, that yields $80 billion per year. That's using our three-tier pricing system of two, one, and 500K. The first year of operation would pay for the station's construction costs, even if the station operated at only 50% capacity. This is all from one station. Now imagine 10 such stations, that's the goal. Clearly, the first space line has all the justification they need to buy space liners. Each of these steps outlined here have a vital element in our space operations going forward. Return on investment, ROI. In business, you need to show your investors how you can make more money at each step along the way. Then they will keep investing. Three, two, one, zero. All engine running.
The historians say that during the Apollo era, America was ascendant. The biggest change to come from building Vera Station will not be industrial, commercial, or financial. It'll be something you cannot really see, but that you notice. Building Vera Station will bring a change in our attitude. We will go from our feelings of doubt and insecurity of building big structures in space to one of optimism and confidence. We will have back a certain swagger in our step, a demeanor of can do. That's what building something big in space can do for us. We will be respected in the same way again when we decide to build a ring of big rotating space stations around the Earth. We will become ascendant again. This generation must decide to build Vera Station not to show the world that we are great, but to show ourselves that we are. We will do this for ourselves and for our children, just as our parents did great things for us. Building Vera class stations will forever change the mindset of many people who still think that building a big station will cost a trillion dollars or take 50 years. I believe this nihilistic attitude comes from the pace that ISS was built. It was the first of its kind, and it was limited by the launch availability and payload constraints of the space shuttle. We won't have those limitations. We will fabricate the parts, launch them, and build Vera Station, and you won't have to wait decades for it to happen. 50 years ago, we all saw this movie depicting a transportation system that would take people to big off-world stations and the moon on a regular basis. We all shared this dream. We all wanted it to come true. We now have that chance with a big rocket and a machine that can make big stations fast. In just a short time, we can expand outward in many different directions. And here's the best part. You can play a part in it. Just as we have a business plan for making Off-World Industries Corporation grow, we have a plan for people who want to work in space. Your first job? Rastronaut. Remote astronaut. Operating bots, drones, and arms remotely. This will be a person's first job in space while living down here. But this opens the door to station jobs. It is an ascension pathway to off-world careers. Then, if you measure up, maybe you can get a job assembling Sargon construction components at ATCAD station to build Vera. If life off-world agrees with you and you work well with others, then a job operating a pod or an STV could be next, flight experience required. Or maybe, if you're tough enough, an EVA job as a space construction astronaut. Once the first Vera class station is built, those people who built it will have the resume that we want to run the station. As they move into rotation, they will leave job openings behind for the next class of off-world employees. Vera Station and the STVs that support it will not be a standalone station, but one of a community of stations. Other stations nearby may not become hotels, but instead offer support services, such as orbiting farms, human waste processing centers, gray water into fuel, salads into fertilizer, fuel stations, recycling stations, and later, mills for processing metals from asteroids, off-world manufacturing centers. This becomes the creation of interstation commerce for the communities of stations. These clusters of stations can be owned by corporations, but they could also be represented by sovereign entities. What could they become over time as they grow? The orbital states of America, or the off-world provinces of the European Union, or perhaps the orbital islands of Japan or Australia. Is America and other nations ready to move beyond just being a terrestrial nation? The opportunity is here. The choice may be yours. Such valuable properties will need to be protected. Space Force or Space National Guard will need to grow alongside this expansion. Space Force has been created, but it has not arrived, not yet. As large civilian stations are built and starships began servicing them, Space Force will at some point buy their own squadron of starships and order a base to be built off-world. Fuel depots and maintenance facilities will follow. The growing space construction industry will answer the call with space construction machines like Sargon that are designed to create large-scale habitats quickly. Much like how the U.S. Navy is global in nature and dependent on widespread infrastructure, Space Force will require assets to help it represent America and our allies, and this is just the beginning. Some people who decide to work off-world will not come home after their first tour of duty. Instead, maybe they will go on to Vespertine Station for a job, 
or they may work at another hotel station that's just come in online. These people may go from station to spaceport to orbiting colony and then maybe to the moon or Mars. The point I'm trying to make is they may never come back here. Trust your life may not measure up anymore. They may choose to live off world for the rest of their lives. Their first ascent, maybe their last one. I believe the first person who will choose this new way of life is alive today. And they may be standing next to you. This quote has haunted me since I first read it years ago. There are lots of ways that humankind can become extinct. Super volcanoes, comets, and big asteroids, or just us killing ourselves with a big, dumb nuclear war. I share the passion of others who believe that humankind needs to become a solar civilization. With people living sustainably on moons, other planets, and everything in between, we have a good chance of making it. But right now, we are only slightly better off than the dinosaurs who got creamed by one big rock, and there's a lot more big rocks out there. Some of us have to ascend off this world. Offworld Industries Corporation is now formed. This is the first space construction company able to create continuous volume habitation like Ferris Station. If you want to become one of our investors, then click the link here. We aim to build these stations fast with bots, pods, drones, and Sargon systems. And I believe that you will visit one of these stations in your lifetime if you want to. To help make that possible, thousands of you will help us build them or work there. We decided to go to the moon 50 years ago, and then we did it. Let's decide to build the station and the hundreds more that will follow so that we can start the greatest adventure in human history. If you'd like to learn more and help support our effort, please click the link here and join our crew membership. Don't forget to subscribe. Ad Astra.